Golden Valley police are warning drivers to pay attention to road construction signs on Winneka Avenue. Several people are ignoring the signs, driving the wrong way and creating a dangerous situation. And just today, prior to you even calling me, we wrote three tickets alone for people traveling um, the wrong way. It wasn't hard to find drivers disobeying the signs. In a 30 minute span, our cameras caught three vehicles in the northbound lane disobey the road close signs and navigate into southbound traffic. Some drivers were bold enough to actually wait for oncoming traffic to pass and risk it all anyway. Certainly that's a bad choice. I mean, if the road's closed, it's only open for southbound traffic. If you're choosing to go northbound, into a southbound lane, you're potentially looking at a head-on collision. And at any type of speed, a head-on collision can be a tragic or a serious event. The road construction project is off Winneka Avenue and Ridgeway Road in Golden Valley. If this area continues to be a problem, police say they might consider closing the road altogether until construction is completed. Motorists who disobey the signs could face fines totaling more than $300. The city of Crystal approved buying a new K-9 police cruiser after their old car was totaled in an accident. Here's a picture of the wreck squad car. A police K-9 squad was involved in an accident during a pursuit on September 6th when someone pulled out in front of the car. The chief said the accident was unavoidable. No one was injured, but the car was a total loss. The U.S. Census Bureau is preparing for the census and part of that is recruiting workers. Census representatives were on hand at North Hennepin Community College Monday and Tuesday, offering people the chance to work for them. The jobs offer flexible hours and paid training. If you're at least 18 and a U.S. citizen, you're probably eligible. If you want to apply, we've got a link on our website. A big change is on the way for people who borrow ebooks from the Hennepin County Library. There's a new rule that will limit the number of ebook copies the library can purchase. Delane Cleveland explains why publishers are doing this and what it means for readers. Libraries have been in business in this country since the get-go. Step into any library and you'll see thousands of books sitting on shelves, waiting for people to enjoy what lies within their pages. But physical books only make up a part of a library's collection. We are finding more of our patrons wanting to read on personal devices, and ebooks make that available to them. These days, nearly everyone has access to electronic devices like smartphones or tablets. And to accommodate the culture shift, Hennepin County now has more than 400,000 e-books and e-audiobooks available in its collection. Uh, we are seeing the biggest growth in our circulation with our e-materials, both e-books and e-audiobooks. They are also very important to certain patrons with disabilities. Whenever a new book comes out, okay. libraries purchase it in a variety of formats. But come November 1st, Macmillan publishers will put a restriction on brand new e-book titles. Which means that instead of us being able to buy 10 or 20 copies, copies of a book, of an ebook when it first comes out, that publisher is limiting us to one copy for eight weeks, and that can be very confusing for our patrons. McMillan says that since ebooks are so readily available from libraries, book sales and authors' royalties have fallen. So by limiting the immediate availability of new ebooks, authors can still earn a decent wage. If you talk to officials from Hennepin County Libraries. That isn't good for our community. Uh, that doesn't encourage reading. They'll argue that the eight week embargo is an arbitrary time frame that only limits access and increases wait times. What we've found is that when our patrons check out authors' books from the libraries, they are much more likely to purchase a copy of that book to give to a friend or a family member or to purchase other titles. Library officials have made public pleas urging Macmillan to reverse their policy. The hope is that Macmillan listens and that other publishers won't follow suit. Um, I hope that they hear from readers that having access to ebooks in libraries is important. At the Ridgedale Library, Delaney Cleveland, CCX News. The American Library Association has started an online petition to urge Macmillan to reverse their ebook policy. We've got a link to that on our website. A group of students at North Hennepin Community College are tackling a tough issue. They are shining a light on suicide prevention. One of the hashtags we're using is be here to, hashtag be here tomorrow. So just kind of emphasizing that, you know, um, that everyone's life is worth living and we want to bring awareness to suicide and the problems that it causes in several people's lives. 
Mar Marissa Entrando is president of the Students Serving Our Community Club at North Hennepin. She wants people to know that suicide often devastates family members when and friends who are left behind wondering why. On Thursday, October 24th at 6 p.m., a documentary titled Suicide, The Ripple Effect will be shown on campus. After the movie, a speaker from North Memorial will talk about grief and loss and the impact of suicide. We have more information about that event posted on our website. It was brought here because it was pretty, and now it just won't leave. We are talking, of course, about buckthorn. Imported to the U.S. as an ornamental hedge, it started spreading quickly and it became invasive. This past Saturday, a group of volunteers in Plymouth held a buckthorn bust. Citizen crews in Maple Creek Park and here at the Hardenburg Open Space spent the morning pulling the problem plant. That's an important task. Buckthorns classified by the DNR as a restricted noxious weed because it spreads so quickly and it can choke out native plants. It's a bully. It's a thug. It kind of comes in and shoves everybody else out and we don't want that. It is common in the area and it might be in your backyard too. If it is, it's best to get rid of it as quickly as possible. And if you'd like to help the city, there are more buckthorn busts coming up. Next Saturday morning at Hardenburg Open Space and the next two Saturday mornings at Maple Creek Park. We've got more information on this story and stories like it posted on our website, ccxmedia.org. The state soccer tournament begins this week. The Maple Grove boys team will make the seventh appearance in program history. Jay Wilcox has more on the Crimson. Unlike today, the sun was shining when we visited the Maple Grove boys soccer team as they started preparation for the state tournament. The Crimson advanced with a road win at Brainerd in the Section 8 AA final. Honestly, it was. It was a great feeling that we, once we scored, you know, just looking at the student section like, yeah, we got this. Um, but we've always been a away team. We haven't lost on the road at all. And It was a great experience, just like being on the bus with all your friends, soccer teammates and stuff, and coming, coming back because we were losing, coming back and winning. It was, uh, I think it will help us going forward in the state. After a bit of a slow start this season, things have really gelled down the stretch for the Crimson. It's a talented group. We got a lot of guys um, that we use this year, and it took us a little bit longer to get them all on the same page. Um, you know, during the season, some some would uh, peak and then others wouldn't. Uh, but right now, everyone's playing together. Uh, I think we're clicking a lot better now. We make a lot better like passes and runs, and just playing together as a team. Because that's the main thing that we talk about, is playing together. Maple Grove went unseeded for state, and they didn't get an easy draw. They'll face top seed Edina in the quarterfinals. They just have to continue to play their game regardless of the opponent. You gotta make sure that offense is clicking. I mean, if we, if we play our game like how we have been playing, you know, cool-headed, uh, you know, just you know, get the ball to some feet, you know, find the open player, stuff like that, take some shots. I mean, we'll be fine. I'd say we got to score goals. That's been the biggest part this year. We've had pretty good defense all year, but got to keep putting the ball in the net. Looks like Maple Grove's ready for action at the state tournament. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Maple Grove meets Edina in the Class AA quarterfinals at 5.30 p.m. Wednesday at St. Cloud State. We'll hear from the Maple Grove and Champlain Bar girls teams about their trips to state starting Tuesday afternoon here on CCX Sports. The section playoffs in high school volleyball get underway this week. Section 5 is loaded with strong teams. Wyzetta is the number one seed. The Trojans bid to reach the state tournament for the first time in nine years. St. Michael Albertville is seeded second. Defending state champion Champlin Park is the number three seed with Osseo seeded four. Maple Grove is the number five seed, Rogers sixth and Buffalo seventh. Park Center and Cooper are the 10th and 11th seeds. Park Center plays at Buffalo and Cooper at Rogers in the first round of play on Tuesday. The quarterfinals are Thursday with Wyzetta, STMA, Champlin Park and Osseo all having home games. The semifinals are Tuesday the 29th. And the section final is Halloween night at Osseo High School. 
In section 6-3A, Bloomington Jefferson is the number one seed. St. Louis Park is second, but Hill St. Margaret's the three seed and Hopkins fourth. Armstrong is seeded sixth. The quarterfinals are Thursday. Hopkins hosts Edina. Well, uh, well, Armstrong will play at Benilde St. Margaret's. The semifinals are Tuesday the 29th, and the section final is Saturday, November 2nd. And there are four teams in Section 5 2A. Totino Grace is seeded third, and Providence Academy fourth there. Coaches associations in Minnesota in track and field and swimming and diving run true team competitions. The concept is meant to reward team depth instead of a few strong individuals racking up points. Well, the state true team girls swimming meet was held over the weekend. Wyzetta placed second behind Minnetonka in Class AA competition. Edida was third as the Lake Conference team sweep the top three spots. Maple Grove placed ninth. Wyzetta's Melinda Zhang won the 100 butterfly and Jenna Marquette won the 100 breaststroke. Breck placed sixth in Class A. That's all for sports. More news right after this.